Today, um, I want to speak to you so a little bit of a continuation of what I spoke a couple of weeks back, three weeks back. Uh, those of you that were here, I spoke on faithful God. How many remember that? Three of you. I'm sure there's more than three of you here. Uh, but I'm glad at least three of you uh, were here. Three weeks, uh, uh, three weeks ago, or oh, maybe four now. Uh, I spoke on, on this title call, uh, called Faithful God and I, we discovered the faithfulness of God and how faithful he, he is in our life and um, one of the first things, uh, first things that I said is that we have to focus uh, on, uh, first of all, we have to have a revelation that God is faithful. That he is a covenant keeping God, that he will never forsake us, he will never leave us. Bible says that even if our birth mother forgets us, he says, I will never forget you. God offers us an unbroken faithfulness you know that no other religion in the world offers no other God in the world offers that kind of commitment to his people in all other religions and all other um, places there's things that you got to do and you got to accomplish certain things you have to do certain things and when you do enough then maybe maybe God will like you, their God will like you and their God will let you into heaven. But unlike our God, He says, I am faithful to you when even you are not faithful to me. Aren't you happy and aren't you glad to be serving such a God? If you are, put your hands together. The next thing that I said is that don't focus on your faithfulness to God, but focus on His faithfulness to you and it would help you to be faithful to Him. Amen. And so today I'm going to kind of write off on this point and go in further. Uh, today I'm going to talk about faithfulness. And that's just my title for today is faithfulness. We're going to kind of talk about faithfulness, commitment, steadfastness in, in, few, in few areas of our life. And like um, I said, is don't focus on your faithfulness to God, but focus on His faithfulness uh, on God. And God will help you to be faithful. And today I want to discover that a little bit uh, in, 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 in my talk, in my message. I want you to write this down one of the one of the meanings a word faithful or faith uh, of, of uh, uh, faithfulness is stickability to prescription write that down stickability and ability to stick to prescription meaning two directions to commitment to to be able to stick to something to the guy and I want you to as we go through it I want you to keep that in mind an ability to stick an ability to stick through an ability to 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 um, not be shaken not be not be waving not to back down not to be wish-washy or changing but to stick through because an, an our ability to stick through in different areas of our life whether it's our relationship with God whether it's our relationship in marriage our relationship in our families whether it's a relationship between us and uh, and uh, co uh, co-workers friends and things like that will determine the kind of quality in life the, the kind of quality of life that we're gonna have amen and now I want you to understand something that being faithful sticking to it doesn't mean that everything is going to be peachy and rosy and everything is going to be great if everything was great in life then sticking to something whether it's a career whether it's a business whether it's a marriage whether it's a relationship with God would be very easy and everybody would do it right but because it requires character because it requires persistence because it requires an effort very few people have ability to stick through and that's why we look at the people if we look at successful people and we look at their life and if you find one characteristics about them you'll find something about them is that they are faithful they're committed they're persistent whatever they begin to do then don't give up until they succeed in it amen and so today i would just want to discover um and and and, and just together with you meditate on a few thoughts and hopefully that we're going to learn something and apply it on our life even though this is not something deep or something that maybe will tickle your theological ears but it's very profound and something 
that will help you in every area of your life amen first thing that we have to be faithful in we have to be faithful in our relationship with God now we already talked about it and discovered that God is faithful to us no matter what no matter what we're going through no matter the hardships that we're experiencing no matter whether we're in a good season or a bad season God is faithful say with me God is faithful say it again God is faithful but in return God asks for our faithfulness and our commitment to him in has in a, a, a prophet Hosea God told him to go and marry a prostitute and it was all prophetic and it was um God was trying to teach a lesson and 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 and, and bring something out and uh, when she married and she she went and picked out a prostitute and married her she uh she gave uh, she gave birth to uh, to his kids and everything and then she went off again and start doing prostitution and sleeping around and then God told to uh, Hosea and he said go back and take her back buy her back because she was sold on the market buy her back as your wife and take her back regardless of her unfaithfulness and then he was prophesying and teaching he said that my people are unfaithful to me my people whenever they they go out and they look for other gods and they worship God in the other scripture he says that my people committed two sins against me one is they went on they they abandoned me as a living water and uh, and they've forsaken me and they went on and dug out the cisterns that can hold water but he said they first thing he said they've forsaken me and in another scripture in Jeremiah God says that your land is desolate because of your unfaithfulness to me and so throughout the scripture we see that God as he commits ourselves to us as he commits and to be faithful to us he expects us to be faithful to him he expects us to be committed to him he expects us to stick through with him you know sometimes you see a person that's getting saved a person gets saved and um, their life is a mess they got no money they got no honey they got nothing and um, addicted to drugs or addicted to other substances and just life as a life a mess you know, living living constant constant depression uh, living constant lack living just unfulfilled life and then they get saved God cleans their life up God redeems them God puts them on a path of righteousness and now um and, and now they're experiencing a good life now they you see all of a sudden they got a career they got a business they got things going for them and before they used to come to every Friday night prayer before they used to come to every service and now you don't even see them at church because they got too busy because they got this business going because they got this job going and God fell out of priorities in their life and that's and that's exactly what I'm talking about is that whether your life good or bad whether things are going well or things are not going well that we develop this thick ability to go with God through everything I look at Job's life Job was and still is according to some calculations that people did is the richest man in the Middle East now if you don't know how rich people in the Middle East are, uh, are you just, they're, they're like, um, yeah what should I buy today, 10 million dollar this or 20 million dollar that, just like, oh just a pocket change. Wickedly wealthy, okay, actually that's a biblical term if you're wondering. Bible says that the, the, the wealth of the wicked will be stored up for the righteous, so they're wickedly rich. Uh, <clears throat> but my point is that jo uh, Job, he is wealthy he is blessed he has everything that he needs yet bible says every single morning he goes and prays to god spends time with god he brings offerings to god he asks god for forgiveness for his sins and for his sins that his family or his servants could have commit regardless where job was in life he always knew who was the source he always knew who blessed him he always knew who brought him up he always knew who, who who sustains him in the moment of his life I want to encourage those that you feel like maybe your life got a little bit too busy 
maybe your life got a little too hectic you got a lot of things going on don't abandon your priority your priority is your relationship with God stick with God doesn't matter how busy you get doesn't matter how many contracts you get doesn't matter how many what kind of career you get stick with God because God will get you through to the end and he is the one that's going to receive you when you close your eyes on this earth and pass on to the next he is the one that's going to receive you stick with God you know when I was um when I was looking for a job as a teenager and thanks to my parents they brought brought me up well in this area when I was looking uh, for a job as a teenager and I found a job or, or when I was applying for jobs at that moment and they would ask uh, you guys probably those that apply for jobs you know they'll ask you to mark which days are you available and which hours right and so there was two days and two set of hours that every application that I filled out they were always crossed off it was Wednesday services so Wednesday afternoons I couldn't I, I, I said Wednesdays I couldn't work and Sundays I did not work because these are the two days that I dedicated and committed that me and my family will go to church we will be committed we will serve at the church so these days are not available and I was I was in a place it was actually not my teenagers that was like a couple of years into being married things kind of got rough with the business the income reduced in 2008 and 9 when the when the market crashed uh, and so I had to I had to go and find a regular job and so and there was I got actually quite a few calls and some tempting calls with a good pay but that I had to work on Wednesdays not even Sunday just Wednesdays and I passed on them because I was committed to church I was committed to God I was committed to God's people and I took a less paying job but I had Wednesdays and Sundays off and I don't know what your situation is and I don't worry you at in life but when you stick with God when you commit it with God God will bring you through good times through bad times he will sustain you all the way through and you're gonna come out victorious in the end there's the other side of people where they come to church things are good things are awesome and then all of a sudden something bad happens in their life something horrible happens in their life their mom dies their uncle dies and they prayed for healing didn't and, and they didn't get healed they're um uh they got on an accident something they lost a job and they were tithing they being faithful coming to church they were serving and now they're out of job and where is god now and all of these things they start asking these questions where is god now where i i've been good i've been doing good i've been tithing i've been giving but now i lost my job i lost a business i i went bankrupt i lost that property i lost a contract where is god now I've been praying for him he didn't answer this need and didn't answer that need where is God and they get discouraged first group of people get too busy the other people gets too discouraged in God and and they leave and they say where is God where was God why didn't he stop this why didn't he stop that what why he didn't come through and it's and they begin to blame God or being even offended at God of the bad things that happen but first thing I want to set one thing clear the bad things that happen in life are not from God and most people that they understand that but the second people second thing that they have a hard time is well I know it's not from God but why he didn't stop it why didn't he stop that this man did this to me that this man touched me this way inappropriately raped me or they uh, this these people stole this money from me these people did this and this why couldn't God stop it he knew how bad I wanted it he knew how bad I needed why didn't God stop it and that's the question that most people really struggle with and so I hope I can I can just kind of put that in perspective for you. you have to understand that God created us as a human beings with a free will he's given us a free will but you say well it wasn't my will to be hurt no it wasn't maybe your will but it was somebody else's will wicked will to hurt you and God has to honor their free will as much as that he has to honor your free will somebody said you know some people can say well if there is God why there's so much evil and hurt in this world why he can just come and stop it all if he could do that he would have to take away humans will and then we would just be like robots with no will to choose just to do whatever whatever we're programmed to do 
by giving free will to us God made us and gave us a choice to choose good or evil unfortunately because of sin sin brought hurt pain and all other terrible things in our lives the suffering and it's not God's fault but it's our fallen nature our sinful nature that um that brings that pain and suffering it may be some uh, so, some even christians i uh, i see online uh on facebook and they would say oh god has brought uh this hurricanes uh to america to uh, wake up america and punish america and 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 and, uh, and all these things i i think it's a little bit of a misguided concept I think it's a misguided concept I think God can use many different ways to wake us up and don't get me wrong God even uses the bad things that happen but he doesn't initiate them God doesn't initiate him all these things even in the nature that happens all these hurricanes earthquakes fires and everything it's a result of Adam and Eve's sin that brought depravity on this earth and even to the nature and what started happening with the, with the nature and everything that's, all, uh, that's going on. So if somebody tells you, oh, why God couldn't do it, why God could, wouldn't stop it, just tell them, because God honors your free will and he honors other people's free will, even if their will is wicked. So back to what I was saying. Be faithful to God. Whether good things or bad things happen to you. Whether you are on the top or you are the lowest of your uh, uh, of the mountain one thing i like about job coming back to job is he stuck with god when he was filthy rich and he had nothing and was dying out of sickness he said let his name be praised he's sovereign he knows it all and even despite of all that he said i know my redeemer lives he can redeem me even from this impossible situation that's the confession of our faith that's the confession of our faith that's what we believe and we know about God he's faithful and he always comes through the song that we were singing at the end um I love this song one of the reasons why I love it because he says that doesn't matter whether I'm sick whether I'm in pain whether I'm hurting I know heaven awaits for me and um you know uh, yesterday we had a, an event uh, with the human sex trafficking and hearing all these terrible stories of people how they suffer and how sometimes they don't even make it past seven years of their life how sometimes these unfair things happen to the children you know it's, it hurts to even think about it especially having especially having kids but then at the end of the day we as Christians we have one hope is that heaven awaits for us heaven awaits for us regardless how difficult the life gets here God is faithful and at the end of the day we're always victorious amen church let's put our hands together for God <laughs> couple ways to be faithful and practical and spending your mornings with God or spending your time every single day with God like Job did and uh, spending your time in the word of God reading reading the things he wrote up to you Bible is a written love letter to you uh, so reading his word meditating on his word spending time in prayer uh, if you we have uh, at 5 a.m. we the, the the church is open for prayer so if you need a prayer uh, place to pray if you need a closet like the Bible says to pray somewhere come to church the door is open the music is playing quiet in the background come and spend time with God and and, and make God your source and your all and I want to tell you something God will see you through in Jesus name amen 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 um the second thing write it down we have to be faithful is we have to be faithful to each other and that covers a range of things first thing um let's take a basics of society you have to be faithful in your marriage you have to be faithful with your family you have to stick through the good the bad and the ugly and this is the reason why when when we get married we say through sickness through health through poverty through riches through good and bad through thick and thin we promise each other that we're gonna love and cherish and we're gonna stick through and that's a very rare commodity nowadays in our society an ability to stick through the marriage and we have to 
we have to set God's word and God's standard as a foundation of our life otherwise we will not succeed in this area and we know that a marriage is a foundation for a family and family is a foundation for society and if these if a marriage crumbles at its core if there is no commitment if there is no stickability if there is no faithfulness then our society will be broken as we know it and we can see the effects of our of the broken society today all around us and it comes down to an ability to stick through in marriage in in india i read a statistic in india there's a lot of in, in india uh, predominantly there's arranged marriages and um, in india the divorce rate in india is about three out of ten thousand if you tell me that's pretty good rate <laughs> now i don't necessarily condone or or, or agree with arranged marriages uh, but what i take from that is that the culture the kind of culture they have is an ability to stick through whatever they got whatever life has given them and they did a study when uh, me and my wife we went uh, occasionally we go to these marriage seminars when we ask people uh, and we we learn from people about marriage so that our marriage gets strengthened and so we can help others to strengthen their marriage and there's a statistic that says the people that went through some some rough times in in, in a marriage whether it was unfaithfulness whether it was financial problem whether it's uh whether it was some character issues whatever it was but those people that stuck through 70 plus percent of them were they said seven years later they said the study was condoned it was like a seven year study or something like that said that they 76 percent if i'm not mistaken but it was above 70 said that they were happy that they stuck through and that they're happier than they ever were on the flip side those people that ended their marriage because of whatever reason it was 70 plus percent said they they regret it and they wish they stuck it through and they're not as happy as they think that they think they could be so an ability to make God's word a standard of your life regardless of the feelings and regardless of the things you're going through and said you know what I'm going to trust God's word I'm going to trust his faithfulness I'm going to trust and I'm going to have faith in God that he's going to get me through it and that is going to get us to the other side and that's going to create strong families strong foundations amen being faithful, being faithful in our families the Bible says Bible says that if we don't take care of our family we are worse than unbeliever we are worse than unbeliever we as people we have to take care of our family we have to take we have to be family oriented people people around us they have to be they have to see us and be envious of the relationships that we have their harmony the the, the peace that we carry don't get me wrong I'm not saying that there's not going to be some scuffles and fights and and disagreements that's part of the family it's part of the process but we have to take care of each other in our in our family in our in our immediate family I'm talking about now right now not as a church family but that also applies to that I'm talking about our our blood family many people abandon their families are embarrassed of their families people are they are they, they don't want to associate themselves with the family now I understand there's different situations for different things but we have to take care of our families we have to take care of our mothers and fathers in this in this culture that we have in America where where parents are retiring in um, in retired homes away from kids so it's like this they've put in all their life into their kids they raised them up they they wiped their butts off and they uh, and they, they they nursed them they were there through through uh, through their sicknesses and through their problems and they were they were there when they needed them most and then when parents grow older when they need them the most they say mom and dad I'm too busy we have to create a culture and you know it's actually only in fairly mostly in America that's that's like that in most cultures in the culture I come from the Slavic culture the, the the kids take care of their their parents they bring them into their home and they and they and they provide for them until they pass unto glory we have to create this culture of stickability with our family is somebody with me yeah. come on let's put our hands together for Jesus yeah. 
another thing that we have to stick to is we have to stick to our friends in this culture that we live in this culture that we live with this with social media and all, all these platforms that are available there's a lot of artificial friends out there and they're not real doesn't matter how many you have if you have 5,000 or 50,000 or 5 million followers on Instagram friends on Facebook or Snapchat I'm gonna tell you and I want to burst your bubble they're not real they won't be there when you when you cry a tear they won't be there when you're thinking should I continue should I should I continue to live on or it's life's too hard we have to develop and nourish real authentic relationships some of us we when when we, we only have friends or we need friends or we ask for friends only when things are bad we need to cry we, we need a shoulder to cry on we need to vent or like we say we need to vomit things 